Most games nowadays are designed to give us giant open worlds that are ready to explore, packed with tons of enemies to fight, side quests galore, endless multiplayer action and collectibles to find. I mean, we're talking about hundreds if not thousands of hours of possible content. But do you ever feel that this is just a little too much and yearn for a simpler time? Or maybe life is just catching up with you and you just have a little too much stuff to do, like go to work, pay your taxes, put your kids to bed, walk the dog, I told you I needed a walk. And then after all this, try and squeeze in some gaming. Because you don't have that time that you're used to anymore. What you want is some decent games that don't take you a million years to finish. That's where our list comes in. Absolutely amazing games that you can beat in just a few hours. At number 7 is The Bridge. And if you go into this expecting a normal puzzle game, where you only need to control your character by walking left and right and maybe jumping, then you're in for a shock because this is not your average puzzle game. It's more big ball, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Exactly. Even though every puzzle in the game gives you the simple goal of walking through a door, it makes this arguably simple task virtually impossible to complete with a constant barrage of physics, gravity, and perspective-based complications and impossible structures in your way. Not to mention those crazy looking death balls that are always out to get you. Now, although The Bridge is a short game, if you judge it by its 24 short levels or 48 with the mirrored levels, I can't actually guarantee that you're about to smash this out in an afternoon. Trust me, the difficulty ramps up as you play. And if that doesn't get you, the way they set up the achievements numbering system will just mess you up. I mean, why? 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 Although this is a great game, I had to 100% this just to keep my sanity and an even gamer score. And don't get me wrong, this game is amazing. But if you did manage to somehow complete this in one sitting without a walkthrough, let me know. Let there be light. Oh, and there was. At number six, we have Numa, Breath of Life. Another great puzzle game. The catch with this one being that the character that you're in control of thinks he's a god. Although he is a rather humble one in his own way. I press on and walk through the wall like a ghost. Nope, walls are solid, can't do that. Note to self, cannot walk through walls. And you're either gonna love or hate his never ending philosophical pondering. Button! Push the button, escape the box. I control the world with a wave of my figurative hand. For me, he reminds me of Wheatley. Hello? So you know where I stand. I thought he was friggin' hilarious, for the most part. And apart from being a great brain teasery puzzle game with challenging gameplay and beautiful environments, it's yet another game that requires you to think outside the box and challenges the way you think. What you think would work one way may work in a completely different way, and nothing is what it seems. But what sets this game apart is slowly listening to Numa, learning about his true nature and your role in it. That's what makes this an amazing game. So if you've never played it, take a few hours and give it a go. It may just surprise you. Number 5 is Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. In Brothers, we take on the role of two siblings, Little Brother and Big Brother, as they go on a quest to find the cure for their father's mysterious ailment. Given the gameplay you can see here, you'd likely think this is a co-op game, but it's actually something much more. It's the best single player co-op experience I've ever had, if there is such a thing. Brothers has an unconventional twin stick control scheme where both players are active simultaneously, each assigned to their individual thumbstick. Don't worry though, it doesn't take too long to get the hang of controlling these two guys as you guide them through their adventure, solving puzzles and throwing little girls balls down wishing wells. <laughs> Don't worry, you get an achievement for doing this though. The main story is actually helping people, believe it or not and helping each other along the way. However, what's more amazing is the non-verbal storytelling and the game mechanics. As the longer you play, you get a feeling as though the big brother and the little brother are actually getting better at helping each other as they develop and learn along their journey. Overall though, it's a great game with an emotional core that I wouldn't really want to spoil for anybody. Number four is Limbo. 
This is another brilliant black and white 2D puzzle game. However, where the main gameplay mechanic and the bridge was all wibbly wobbly tiny wimey, this one's puzzles are all based down to earth. Or six feet under. Dead is what I'm saying. Seriously, if you haven't played this game, you die. Virtually all puzzles involve some form of mortal peril. And you die a lot. Limbo is not trial and error, it's trial and death, and it's usually in some surprising and unexpected ways. Unseen bear trap here, misstep there. If you haven't already been through an area before, you are absolutely getting caught out and you are gonna die. Trust me, it's okay. But don't worry, there are decent enough checkpoints in the game to keep powering through to the end. But just don't be expecting to 100% this game anytime soon. Number 3 is Inside, yet another puzzle platformer from the makers of Limbo. And the truth is, the less I can say about this thing, the better. Obviously not because it's a bad game, but because I want you to go into this thing as blind as possible. And anything I say about it here has a risk of spoiling anything you would normally learn through natural gameplay, especially the ending or endings, depending on how motivated you are. Seriously. Don't go and look this up ahead of time. At number two is Little Nightmares, a perfect title for an eerily creepy yet absolutely brilliant game. If you've never played Little Nightmares, imagine if Hide and Seek was a horror game, and you have your answer. Reminiscent of Limbo and Inside, Little Nightmares Morbid World sets you out on a tense stealth-based journey full of puzzle platforming and horrific sights. Here you control Six, a little girl just trying to survive and battle her own starvation. Six needs to evade all manners of creepy crawlies, and the reasons you never look under your bed in the middle of the night. Each and every time she leaves the safety of the crawl spaces spread throughout the vessel that she finds herself trapped on. But she's not only being chased by creatures of the dark, but by much larger people not only intent on killing her, but on eating her as well. Little Nightmares puzzles are brilliantly executed, and although not being too hard, constant fear of waiting to be found by something that's hunting you is enough to send chills down your spine. And at number one, we have Portal. Because you can't create a list like this and not mention Portal. It's the epitome of a perfect, short, amazing game. It has challenging gameplay, a perfect length, while not feeling forced or hurried along. In case you've never played it, the game centers around Chell, who wakes up trapped in the Aperture Science Laboratory Testing Facility. Chell is guided by GLaDOS, the Aperture Science Enrichment Center AI, to complete various tests with the use of a portal gun and the promised reward of cake, which sounds totally delicious, I'm sure. We will stop enhancing the truth in three, two, one. The puzzles in Portal are not only challenging, but are really fun. I originally had this at the start of the list, but when I went to get the footage for it, I had to stop myself from playing through the entire game again because I just kept going after I got what I needed for this list. Apart from problem solving, it never really gets old just dropping between floors, flinging yourself around the map, messing with turrets, or locking yourself in a room. A complimentary escape hatch will open in three, two, one. I'd say the only thing missing from this game, if anything, is maybe a side character on Chell's side, voiced by Stephen Richard. Hello? But seriously guys, this thing came out in like 2007, so if you seriously haven't played this yet, you're long overdue. This is a rare gem, worthy of attention, and trust me, it's well worth the wait. Anyway, that's our list guys. Now I know this list only scratched the surface of all the amazing games that are out there, and if you know any that I've missed, let me know in the comment section down below. Also let me know your favourite while you're down there. Please remember to give this video a like and subscribe and ring that bell if you haven't already. And if you think someone else may enjoy this video, give it a share, it always helps.